Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, adoration, majesty, and dominion. Lord, teach us tonight. Reveal secrets tonight. Lord, show us things that we have never known before. Interpret mysteries to us by your Spirit in a greater measure, never known to anyone, O oh God. And Lord, may we leave this class tonight revived, rejuvenated for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord amen. for glory and grace. <coughs> for glory and grace. All right, brothers and sisters, we want to discuss a very important lesson tonight. And um, it's very important because um, when you when you understand why you should do what you should do you'll be able to appreciate it better and so for that simple reason we want to discuss a very very important lesson please 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 give your attention if you know you cannot write notes listen carefully we're going to make the teaching available on youtube so that god's people can have access to it and what we want to discuss today is who can guess <laughs> we want to discuss jesus praise god Are you offended? No. We, th we thought you would be happy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> Amen. We have discussed the name of Jesus. He's on YouTube. But now we want to discuss his person. We want to discuss Jesus. So we are looking at the person of Jesus. Who is he? Because you see, there are many Christians today who are born again quite all right. Who have confessed Jesus as the Lord of their lives, but they don't know him. The only thing they know about him is what they have heard people say. Or probably watched on TV. You know all those movies. The closest they have gotten is on the Passion of the Christ. So we want to discuss Jesus. The person of Jesus. Who is he? Where did he come from? Why did he come? What is his mission here? Now, it is easy for us to say, well, the reason why he came is because he came to save man. Okay? But who is he? Oh, yeah, you know, Jesus was born of a virgin called Mary. And that's where the movie Every movie of Jesus, that's where it actually begins. Apart from the movie of the Passion of the Christ that speaks of, that began at the Garden of Gethsemane. Every other movie that talks about Jesus begins from when Mary got pregnant. And for so many Christians, sad to say, many ministers under heaven, general overseers, all they know about Jesus begins from there. So, but... We have been really privileged in these lessons, in this class, where the Holy Ghost himself has been teaching us. Because the Bible does tell us that Jesus is the child of the Holy Ghost. And so it takes the father of a child to tell you everything that you need to know about the child. True of us. True. So we want to discuss Jesus. Indeed, brothers and sisters, we must commend the Roman Catholic because... If for anything, they have really projected the person of Jesus, but just that um, 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 the methods may not be right, but somehow they have somehow projected the name of Jesus. And we dare say that in our contemporary day, if not really for the Roman Catholic Church, before um, the Pentecostal movement took over, 
many of us would have been ignorant about who Jesus really was or who Jesus really is. And yet, what the Roman Catholic does know about Jesus is a flicker. But so far so good, they have been really, they have been able to project the person, even though the method may not be right. So we must commend them for that. And even those within the Pentecostal circle, they have also projected the person of Jesus by preaching the gospel to people, causing men to declare Jesus as Lord. But one thing that is lacking is that even these preachers who cause men to declare Jesus as Lord don't even know who this Jesus really is. Now somebody says, oh, see, are you trying to say that you are just the only person who really knows who Jesus really is? We dare say to you that Ozzy does not know Jack. You are probably even wiser than Ozzy. You are probably wiser than Ozzy. Because the last time we checked, you are older than Ozzy. Ozzy is still a small boy, so he's still learning anyway. Alright? But... <clears throat> we want to look at the person of Jesus. And please, you can, if you are taking notes, you can write down areas that we would like to consider in these lessons on the person of Jesus. We want to discover, we want to discuss, we said discover, we want to, okay, we want to discover Jesus. And in discovering Jesus, we want to discuss his origin. We want to discover his origin, his birth, uh, we're also going to discover, discuss, sorry, his, of course, discover his purpose, and um, Well, uh, for now, we'll just mention these three. And if the Spirit of God... Okay, we're also going to discuss His death. His death. Alright? And then finally, His resurrection, too. So, um, well, we have so much to discuss. But definitely, we cannot exhaust everything tonight. So, we want to begin with the first bullet point. So we said we're going to look at his origin, his birth, his purpose, his death and resurrection. <clears throat> now what a lot of Christians are familiar with is his birth. They are familiar with the aspect of his purpose and of course they are familiar with his death and his resurrection. But many are ignorant about his origin. And once you understand his origin, you'll be able to appreciate his birth and understand his purpose and then appreciate his death and then expect his coming having resurrected from the dead. So, these are the areas we're going to look at. So, let's begin with his origin. Uh, turn to John chapter 1. Turn, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Please listen carefully. Don't miss this at all. And please, brothers and sisters, what you are going to hear today are things that will surely offend your theology. You can be sure of that. Uh... And the motive, the intent is not to convince you. We don't intend to convince you. That's not the intent at all. <clears throat> and um, we'll tell you the truth. It will be left for you to make your own decision. But we don't intend to convince you. We just want to let you know the truth. So that you can consider it. And then consider what you already know. And wait. Praise God. <clears throat> now, in John chapter 1. If you are there, say Amen. Amen. Verses 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word. 
And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now, verses 14 says, And the world became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, you find out that from the conjunct in verses 14, from where you have the word, and the word became Sorry, and we beheld his glory. You find out that it's in bracket form. Parenthesis. Bracket form. And so, um, he's trying to describe, describe to us what the word of God that was made flesh was to us in human form. That people beheld his glory because nobody could see the glory. So, when he became flesh, people could see the glory. So, now, isolate that, that sentence that is in parenthesis where he says, And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Isolate it and you will find it reads, And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, full of grace and truth. So, we want to talk about Jesus. Now, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Now, this is one of the areas where a lot of people who teach on Jesus, on the person of Jesus, quote from. But when you look at verses 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Now, when did the beginning begin? Go to Genesis chapter 1 and read verses 1. In Genesis chapter 1 verses 1, it reads, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And then it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, in verses 14 of John chapter 1, it says, And that word that was in the beginning became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Now, if you go to 1 John chapter 5, please quickly turn there. 1 John chapter 5. You will read in verses 7. 1 John chapter 5, verses 7. <clears throat> he says, For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Please mark, mark them. Mark these three persons. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Now, when you notice there, he says the Word. He didn't say Jesus. So, in the very beginning, there was no person called Jesus. What you had in the beginning was the word that became flesh. So, when you go to the book of Genesis chapter 1, again, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word there, God, we have said that previously in many classes, that the word God there does not mean one God. It refers to Elohim. Elohim is not the name of God. Elohim is the plural 
of God. Just like the way you say boy, singular, boys, plural. Boy, singular, boys, plural. Girl, singular, girls, plural. Car, singular, cars, plural. So when he says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the word God there is Elohim, which is the plural for God. So he's not talking about one person creating the heavens and the earth. So in the, he reads in the beginning, Elohim, the plural of God. So in our, in our plain English language, it will read in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Which God? You see the next verse there. He says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So, we know that there are three that bear record in heaven. He says, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Now, we are being introduced to the person of the Holy Ghost. And of course, we know in verse 3, he says, And God said, Let there be light. So one person spoke. Who was that person? The Father. What did he say? He said the Word. So in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, he says there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. So these are the three. But there was no person, there was no physical form of a person called Jesus. The only two people that we know who were personalities were, and, and they are still personalities today, are the Father and the Holy Ghost. From the very beginning. There was no separate person in heaven called Jesus. Because there was no Jesus from the very beginning. There was only the Word. And in the book of Revelation, the Bible says the one that shall be crowned is not Jesus. The one that shall be crowned is who? The Word of God. So when did, when did Jesus become Jesus? Well, in John chapter 1, he says, And the Word became flesh. That's when the Word that was in the beginning, that created the heavens and the earth, and everything that in them is, became flesh. Now, when you go to John chapter 1, please go there, John chapter 1, you will see something in verses 14. He says, And the Word became flesh. And dwelt amongst us. Brothers and sisters. When did the word. Become flesh. Now we know. <clears throat> that many of you. Shall say. Well. It was when. Mary. Had Jesus. That the word of God. Became flesh. Now, some of you may say, mm -mm. when Mary had Jesus, she was pregnant with him, so the word was not flesh until Mary delivered, uh, gave birth to Jesus. So, Jesus now became flesh. But brothers and sisters, in as much as it sounds logical, and it sounds true, that is actually not the origin of Jesus. Even though the Bible does tell us that the word of God became flesh. Because you see, for you to understand who Jesus really is, brothers and sisters, you need to understand the book of Genesis. And also understand the book of Revelations. Because until you understand these two books, you can never know who Jesus really is. You can never know. Because the book of Genesis will tell you the origin of Jesus. And the book of Revelations tells us who Jesus really is now. So every major truth begins with the book of Genesis. 
But every final truth ends with the book of Revelations. If you are taking notes, you can write that. Every major truth begins with the book of Genesis. And every final truth ends with the book of Revelations. And so primarily, aside other scriptures we are going to look at, concerning the person of Jesus and his origin, these are the two books we are going to really look at, critically, to understand the origin of Jesus. And so for us to better understand the origin of Jesus, we are going to look at the book of Genesis and the book of Revelations. In as much as we are still going to look at other scriptures. Is that fine? Amen. Amen. Alright, so. Alright, so. Are you ready now? Yes. Alright, now. Can you repeat that the major truth? Sorry. We said every major truth begins with the book of Genesis. And every final truth ends with the book of Revelation. In other words, there is nothing that the book of Genesis ever narrated that is not in the book of Revelation. Nothing. Nothing. If you want to know what are the revelations you have in the book of Revelations by John the Divine are true, look at the book of Genesis. And we dare say this to you, for you to even better understand the book of Genesis, you need to understand the book of Revelations. Now somebody will say, no, I understand Genesis, but the book of Revelation, mm -mm. no, then that means you don't understand the book of Genesis. How can you say I don't understand? Was it not Adam and Eve? <laughs> it means you don't understand it. Now, brothers and sisters, we would like to say something here. And um, we say this with due respect, even though we know it will offend your theology. But let's tell you the truth. There would have been no need for Jesus. There would have been no need for Jesus. Now, brothers and sisters, we know that some of you have already, of course, some of you have once said, Oh, is an antichrist. So, we know that some of you will say more with what we are about to tell you. So, it doesn't bother us anyway, whether you call us antichrist or not. But there would have been no need for Jesus. No need for Jesus. Why? Like we said again, for you to understand who Jesus is, go to the book of Revelations. Go to the book of Genesis. To see the major truth. And then you finally see the final truth in the book of Revelations. So go to Genesis. Chapter 1. Are you there? If you are there, say Amen. Amen. Now look at verses 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Are you there? Yeah. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And, say, and God said unto them. Now when he used the word them, them, who is he talking to? The male and the female. But it was only one person that God created at this time. And God blessed them, verses 28, and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Please mark that expression. Mark the blessings. Mark the command of the blessings. The first thing God said unto them, the male and the female, He said, be fruitful. Mark that. Mark that expression. Be fruitful. That's the first blessing. The second one, multiply. He says, be fruitful and multiply. And the third thing he said, and replenish the earth. The fourth thing he said, and subdue it. In other words, conquer it. 
And the fourth thing, he said, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. What a blessing God gave this male and female called Adam. And with all the blessings that the Lord God Almighty Jehovah pronounced upon this man that he created called Adam, there was no need for Jesus. Because even the Jesus that we serve was born as a baby. This one was created as an adult. He was not a baby. The only human person in life who never experienced childhood was Adam and Eve. These were the only two people who never experienced childhood. They never knew what it was like to be a baby. They have never experienced it. They were made as adults. But Jesus was a baby. He grew as a baby. But with the blessings that the Lord pronounced upon man, Adam, there was no need for Jesus. Now, go to chapter 2. Verses 1. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Did you see that? It says, The heavens and the earth were finished. Finished. Now, when something is finished, there is no need to add to it. Two of us. Two of us. True. There is no need to add to it. It says, The heavens and the earth were finished. So there was no need. It says, And all the hosts. That is in them. And when you read from Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 to verses 31. You will never see where Jesus was mentioned. Yet in verses 1 of chapter 2. He says thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And all the host of them. And Jesus was not mentioned. He says everything was finished. And on the seventh day God ended his works. Which he had made. The Bible says God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his works which he had rested. Now somebody say, well, it's in the past tense because of the word had, had. Well, when you read Hebrews chapter 4 verses 10, it says, if only they shall enter his rest and cease from their works as God did from his. So God is still resting. But he's trying to show us when the rest of God began. So everything that God made was perfect. Everything was finished. So there was no need for Jesus. Now this will help you now begin to understand why Jesus had to come. From the very beginning there was no need for him to come. After all. There was no person in heaven called Jesus. We just saw it in 1 John chapter 5 verse 7. He said there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word. He didn't mention Jesus. He says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. There was no Jesus. And when the Bible says God finished everything and rested, there was no need for Jesus. There was no need. Because all that was needed was given to already to a man who was made in God's own image and likeness. So there was no need for Jesus. Now see something. Verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his works which God created and made. Did you see that? Which God created and made. He blessed it, he sanctified it the seventh day. Now, verses 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the heavens and the earth. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field because before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, 
and there was no man to till the ground. Yet he blessed man. He says, but there was no man to till the ground. Yet he blessed man. What does that tell you? The creation of the world was different from the making of the world. Everything you read in chapter 1 was, the, was done in, in the spirit. And from chapter 2, you begin to see the making of what God already had done, what, what God had already done in the spirit. So all God needed to do was to replicate what he had already done in the spirit here in the earth. You see, the earth is God's taste. You want to know what God really looks like and what God's taste is. Look at the earth today. The earth is God's taste. Now, verse 6. He said, But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Did you see that? He said, God made man, formed man, and breathed into his nostrils. And man became a living soul. But from the blessings that we saw that the Lord pronounced on man, there was no need for Jesus. There was no need for Jesus. At all, there was no need for Jesus. Now, see something now. Verse 8. Verse 7 again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a, a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of, the, of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it was parted and became into four heads. Now, verse 11. The name of the first is Pishon, that is it which compassed the whole land of Avila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is gold. There is Delium and the Onyx stones. Onyx stone. Verse 13. And the name of the second river was Gihon. The same is it that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hedeke. That is it which goeth towards, towards the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Euphrates. Now, verses 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden to dress it and to keep it. Please take note of that. The Lord took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Please read it again. Read it. Let's read it together. Verses 15. And the Lord God, the Lord God. took the man and, and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying. Now, notice, God did not counsel the man. He commanded him. He didn't advise him. He gave him a command. Someone said, what has this got to do with the person of Jesus? You will see this now. Because we want to discuss the origin of Jesus. How Jesus came about. Because from the very beginning, there was no need for Jesus. There was no need for Jesus. Verse 15 again. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, please mark that word, die. 
From all that we have read that God created, did he create death? No. So why would God tell Adam about death? He said, don't eat of that tree, of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day you shall eat of it, you shall die. And God never expected Adam to eat of it. Now you know the story. The same God said it is not good for a woman to be alone. So he made the woman and then brought the woman to Adam. And Adam said she, she shall be called Eve. She shall be called woman, really. It was God who named the woman Eve after the fall. But Adam named the woman woman. So Adam called her woman. She's taken out of my bone, blah, 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 and all that. Um, there's first and a man leave his father and his mother and all that now we all know the story in chapter 3 how the the conversation between the serpent and the woman we want to believe you understand that but if you don't you can read that story because of time but now when man fell from the garden the bible says in verses 8 of genesis chapter 3 the Bible says, and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. <laughs> the Bible says they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Yet, the one who even made the trees is the one that they were running from. And the Lord. And the Lord God called unto Adam. And said. Verses 9. Where art thou? And he said. I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid. Because I was naked. And I hid myself. And he said. Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten the tree? Has thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. And the man said, follow this carefully now. The woman whom thou gavest to me, gavest to be with me. <laughs> she gave me of the tree and I did eat. He says, the woman which thou gavest to be with me. Was it not Adam who called her his wife? He said, God, you were the one who gave her to me oh, to be with me. I didn't want that be in the, to begin with. You were the one that brought that to me. <laughs> Verse 12 again. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is it? What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. And the Lord said unto the serpent. Brothers and sisters, this is where we are really going. We said we are discussing the person of Jesus. We want to discuss his origin. Because you see, what many Christians are familiar about concerning the origin of Jesus is the birth of Jesus by Mary, his mother. But that is not the origin. And from the very beginning in creation, there would have been no need for Jesus. Because the Bible says God had already finished all he needed to do. And amongst all that Moses, the man of God, gave us in the book of Genesis, there was no Jesus mentioned. Because there was no need for any Jesus. And there was no separate person in heaven called Jesus. There was none. The only thing we knew in heaven was the word of God. The angels never saw any person in heaven called Jesus. So when did Jesus come? Or when did God decide that there was going to be a Jesus? I want to show you now. When God had to send Jesus. Verse 14. 
And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the feed. Upon, the, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity, now look at this carefully, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Let's take it again. Verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee, please mark that word, thee, and the woman. And between thy seed and his and her seed, he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Brothers and sisters, at this point, let's ask you a question before we move on. Please mark the word thee in that verse 15, where it says between thee and the woman, and please mark the the expression the woman mark the expression thy seed and mark the expression her seed so brothers and sisters let's ask you who is thee who is the thee there that the Lord was talking about when he says between thee who is the thee there who can tell us who is the thee there Ma, we didn't hear you, ma. Are you are you talking to us or oh, oh, you are so little quiet? I, I said something and then I noticed maybe I said something wrong. That's why I kept quiet. No, say what you want to say. I said this. This is the serpent. Okay. Why do you say so? Yes. Because after you know, after Eve says that she was deceived by serpent. So God put that in between the serpent and the woman. Alright, Sister Kisha, your voice was low at a particular place. Alright, let's hear from somebody then. Okay, so let, let's ask somebody else then, Sister Kisha. Alright, so who can tell us who is the D there? Praise the Lord. Alright, so let's hear you. Who is the D there? This is the Alma, it's a serpent. Why do you think he's a serpent? Because the Lord was telling the serpent because he has done that. And the next verse was saying, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. So, it's, it's continuation from what he was saying from the next all right, thank you, brother Felix. Sir, do you agree with um, the previous speakers? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I, I, I would say because um, it's, it's like uh, referring to to the actual, if I may use the word, actual thing that I have created or uh, uh, brought the confusion in between Adam and Eve. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's the angle I'm looking at it. Uh, okay. Because it looks like, yes. Okay. Sophie, can I, oh my goodness, can I change my answer? Okay, go ahead, let's hear your answer. All right. I say it's the seed of a woman. Why would you say the seed of the woman? Because, um, and I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, hope, I hope I did not cut Brother Felix. Did I? Don't worry, go ahead, then Brother Felix will continue. Let's hear you. Okay, so Brother Felix, let's hear your concluding statement, sir. Hello, Brother Felix, sir. <laughs> okay. uh, are you done, sir, with your contribution? <laughs> on, the, um, <laughs> on this particular one? Yes, on the D. <laughs> 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 yeah, my, um, 
moving and looking at it. At first, I was thinking it was directing it to Adam, but then um, um, when I realized that the actual, actual person that, uh, that caused the whole confusion is um, <laughs> the serpent who was able to convince uh, Eve to eat the, the forbidden fruit, and from there, Adam got involved and also got um, thought into the whole thing. So, I was thinking it's directing it to the um, to the serpent. But, but, but sir, can we not say that the deed there is even the man? After all, you have many marriages today where the husband and the wife, they don't see eye to eye anymore. In fact, the woman is ready to shoot the husband. And this is the man she once loved. And the man is ready to even poison the woman. Mm -hmm. Right? Can we really say that deed there could have been the man? After all, he said between D mm -hmm. and the woman. It could be Adam. Adam, yeah, but then, uh, yeah, it could also be, but then I, I keep thinking, where does, um, you know, serpent fit in here in the whole... No, but, but don't you, God has already caused the serpents now in verses 14. After all, Adam said it was the woman you gave me. He never wanted the woman to begin with. Don't you think that the deed there could be the... the Adam. It could be Adam. <laughs> uh, it's a possibility, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. All right, Daddy Francis, we guess you wanted to say something. Let's hear you, sir. Yeah, over here, I feel uh, the Lord was speaking to Adam because the Lord never instructed uh, Eve. So after warning or cursing the serpent, he turned to the man who is Adam because he instructed and gave a command to Adam not to Eve. <laughs> But that, but the difference is, if that is true, then why did God bring the woman to the man in the first place? If He wanted to strike enmity, enmity between the man and the woman. He did not want to bring enmity between the man and the woman, yeah. uh, the man and the woman. If God didn't want them to be together, why did He bring the woman? If He wanted to strike enmity between the man and the woman. What was the helper? So now that. I, it could, who is the D there? Is it the man? You said it's the man. When he says, I'll put enmity, is it God's desire to put enmity between a man and a woman? If, it is, if that D there is the man, based on your answer. He brought the woman to him as a helper, and he gave me. Adam was trying to take instruction from the woman. And oh. from he, the maker. The... Okay. Thank you so much, sir. All right, thank you so much, sir. All right, brothers and sisters, to better understand who that D is, let's ask you, who is the woman? Let's even ask you, who is that woman there? Who is the woman? Of course, probably the answer is obvious, right? Who is the woman? Uh, Brother Felix, you say what? <laughs> I, would, I would think he's uh, Eve. Ah, sir, you are, not, you are really not sure. There was only one woman that we saw in the whole story there. <laughs> Uh, it's Eve. Eve. Yes. <laughs> There's no other woman, right? Okay. Yes. All right. Who again agrees with Brother Felix? Okay. What is your name, ma? My name is Kisha. I agree with Brother Felix. Why do you agree? Why do you agree that it is Eve? Because she's the only woman that uh, written there. <sighs> she's the only woman who can carry, she's the only person who can carry a, a seed in her body. Mm -hmm. have, you not seen, have you not heard that some men get pregnant? No. Yeah, the men, no. I've never, there was only one man I saw and he was a woman, so. The, the woman is the only one who has the womb. They are the only one who have the womb that a, a baby can, you know, a seed can be raised in the womb. Have you not heard that some men have given birth before? Uh, no, no, no. Ah, Zakisha. Zaki, Zaki, Zaki. Hey, hey. And you are civilized. You didn't know that some men give birth. Ah, uh, I didn't know. Unless you are, you are women who act like men. <laughs> you, have, you have to have a womb. You have to have, I mean, why did Mary become the mother of Jesus? Okay, fine. Let's ask you, these transgender people, is it that they don't have a womb? Men. No, the men now who are transgender to women, don't they have womb? They don't have a womb. No, they don't have a womb. 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 They don't
Okay, I'll watch my language, but well, they don't change the inside, they change the output. Sorry. Oh, oh, okay. It is well. Praise God. All right. Okay. Let's hear from somebody. Who is the woman then? For us to better understand the D there. Who is the woman? The woman is... Sorry, this is Sister Emma from New Jersey. All right, ma'am. The woman is Eve because we see that it's Adam that named everything and he's the one that named the woman Eve. Sorry. He's the one that called Eve the woman. So, the woman is Eve. All right. <coughs> Who again agrees with them or has a contrary opinion? Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Are you offended? Hallelujah! Ah, come on! Make your contributions. Who is the woman? For you to understand who the D is, who is that woman? Please. If... Okay, break it now. Go ahead. Let's hear you, sir. Uh, I agree with uh, Sister Amma because the way it says it, from the beginning it says that um, Adam named the woman, um, Eve uh, the woman, so who else could be, be the woman? We should, we're, that's what we're asking you, you're asking us back again, <laughs> who else could be the woman? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Kina. Alright, but by Kina, okay, you've explained why you think it's the woman. Alright, one more person. One more person. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on now, be bold. Be bold. Uh -uh, it's there, read it. If you, if you know it's a woman, say it. At least others have been bold to say it. If you think someone is it's, it's, it's someone else, tell us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, where is Sister Elizabeth? Where is uh, Sister Esther? You guys are Bible students now. Where are all these people? I thought you people know the Bible. Oh. Where is Sister Benedict? You people that know Bible like this. Hey. Yeah? Let's hear you now. You have been preaching, 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 preaching. Where is Pastor Justin, sir? Pastor Justin, where are you? Where is Sister Winnie? Sister Winnie, ah, uh -uh. Where are you? Where are these people? Who is the woman? Hey. <laughs> Please, we don't know your name. What is your name, ma? This is Pastor Justin from Germany. Okay, Pastor Justin. You say it's, the, it's who? Is Eve? Yes. Okay. Why do you say it is Eve, ma? Because uh, in the, the Bible says the woman. Okay. Eh, the woman, now, at least we have transgender who are women too now. As the woman. <laughs> okay. All right. One more person now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, uh -uh, let's hear Sister Winnie. Let's hear Sister Elizabeth. Ah, uh -uh, you people that know Bible like like to quote Bible to us. You are not quiet. Hey. Okay, this is Winnie from Pennsylvania. Okay, go ahead, Sister Winnie. Thank you for taking that bold step. Okay. The woman is Eve because so far we haven't heard about any other woman. She's the only woman. Okay. So as a woman. All right, thank you, man. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, we feel like asking one more person. One more person. Okay, brother. No, if you have made contributions before, no, no, not you, not you. Don't give us your opinion again. You have already made your opinions. All right, let's give room for somebody who has not made an opinion. Where is Sister Joy? Where is uh, uh, Where is uh, Linus family? Where are these people? Let's hear from you. Eh? One more person now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, ah. Hey, where is Sister Elizabeth? Where are these people? Where is uh, Linus family? All right, let's hear from you, Sister Linus. Okay, Sister Obi. You are the one we are calling Sister Linus. Sorry, ma. Okay, go ahead, ma. Now, the only woman in the Bible, the only woman created the earth, is the earth, is the earth. All right. Is that your final answer? Mm, 
man. I'm the only woman now in the Bible. Sister Albi, you are trying to make us agree with you. You say he's the only woman now. You are trying to... You are, you are making an appeal to us. All right. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. The D there. Let's read that verses 15 again. Let's read verses 14 into verse 15. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the feed. And upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thou shalt... Okay. And thou... Sorry. And dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Let's take it again. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee. Who is the thee there? The thee is the serpent. Okay. You are correct for those of you. Raphael is clap for yourself. Amen. Amen. Ah, Brother is clap. Now you are not clapping, sir. Let's hear you clap. Oh, okay. <laughs> Amen. Ah, you didn't clap, oh, Brother We didn't hear you. Clap. Let's hear you, sir. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> All right. So, and the deed there is a serpent, right? Yeah. All right. And it's verses 15 again. He said, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. We said, D is a serpent. And the woman. Who is the woman there? The woman is not Eve. The woman is not Eve. So tomorrow afternoon, we'll discuss who the woman is. Bless the name of the Lord. We'll continue tomorrow afternoon. We'll continue tomorrow afternoon. The woman is not Eve. All right. Mascara Katia, Brakas Kize, Kretia, Bro Soko. Make later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. <coughs> amen. 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 Have you learned something this evening? Yes. <laughs> amen. All right. So let's hear from you. What have you learned? Sister Matelos, you that said yes, what have you learned? At least I know that the woman is not evil. <laughs> 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 that is politically correct. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> the last of it, I said it, but I, I, I wasn't sure. Okay. Having the woman is not evil. I know there is a woman in Revelation. I don't know whether it's that woman that is being referred here. So. We are eager to listen to that yet tomorrow. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, others may not be eager, just you. So we don't know about others anyway. All right. Oh, I'm weak. All right. So who? Like, this is me, 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 me here, Sister Keisha. Mm. Um, what I learned today. Uh, oh gosh, I can't wait for tomorrow. Well, what I learned today is in the book of John, chapter one, verses one to fourteen, that the word. In the beginning was the word, and that word became flesh. And then I also learned in First John five seven that what you had in the beginning was was the word, or the same thing that became flesh. That the three bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, the Spirit. Yes. And then um, I also learned that the book of Genesis tells us the origin of Jesus, which we are and we which we just started. And every major truth begins with the book of Genesis, and every final truth ends in the book of Revelation. Amen. And then we learn today. I'm just curious for tomorrow because there will there will have been no need for Jesus, so I still want to know why. And then. Uh, Yes, and then in Genesis 1, 2, 6, we also learn that God created man in his own knowledge. And then, image, sorry. And then, um, I also learned that 
Abraham, which have never got it. Adam and Eve were the only one who did not have childhood experience. They were not babies. I've never even thought about that. Before. You know, you just never thought about it. So, but Jesus Christ said a childhood. He was he was born. He was a baby. So I'm I'm just curious. I'm I'm left with suspense until tomorrow. So Amen. thank you so much. Amen. All right, let's hear from somebody else. Ah, uh, what is your name, ma? Sister Elizabeth. Sister Elizabeth, it's not that you are talking. Not the way we were asking you questions, you didn't refuse to talk. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes myself, I want to learn when other people are talking. So. Uh, all right, go ahead, ma. Um, I thank God because um, I know you talked about this thing before. You know that every major should you know in the book of genesis and then the book of revelation it ends with it so um when you started talking about jesus there was no need for jesus you know i started you know pondering like really you know so but when i continue to listen as you read and bring out all those the scriptures and I saw that indeed there was no need for Jesus. So I begin to think, so what happened? And then of course the fall of man and everything. So in fact, you know, of course me right now, I'm just like into the class that we start tomorrow. <laughs> and you know, me I'm driving I'm I'm already concluding my own <laughs> my own, you know, how the Jesus came to being, you know, because I believe it's there is a mystery between the book of Genesis and Revelation. Amen. And I bring Jesus Amen. into our situation. So yes. I'm just trying to bring out that conclusion like in my mind, like, okay. This is why, you know, Jesus came. So for me, eh, it's a learning experience, you know, for me to be able, you know, when you bring, after you bring all the scriptures, and for me to put, yeah, I've started like putting the puzzles together. Oh, <laughs> Before tomorrow, because sometimes <laughs> when the class ends like this, it's like you're suspending us until the next day. I'm like, okay, let me, let me just start, you know, to put the puzzles together before even the class. I'm just that's trying to figure out something. Amen. And for me, that's the beauty of this class. Yes. You know, learning. Yes, yes. And then, you know, leave us in that state of suspense. Like, you have uh, homework to go and do, you know, think deep, you know, like dive deep. And me, I love that kind of thing. Amen. Yeah, but, you know, I really have something to do. I'm not just go and sit down. I really have to go and sit down and think until you get to this point. You know, mm. what would be the final result, you know? And if I could not make anything, if I cannot bring no conclusion to it, I'm like, okay, I can't switch now. I will begin to count the time that you mean five hours or six hours to the class. <laughs> I can't wait until mm. we get to that class. So mm. that's the beauty of this. And I thank God. Today, I begin to learn that indeed there was no need for Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And you, for the fall. Amen. And you know, brothers and sisters, with that, by the time we're done with this lesson on the person of Jesus, you begin to, you, you believe, believe us without a shadow of a doubt. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you will appreciate who Jesus is. I mean, you love him more than ever and you appreciate him. By the time we're done with this lesson, you will see a different perception of Jesus. Then you get to know why Jesus came and why he did what he did. You see, many people profess him, but they don't know him. Somebody say, Osi, so do you claim that you know him? Osi is still learning, no. Don't forget, Osi is also a student in this class too. Most of the things that we're seeing here, they are new to Osi, oh. Brothers and sisters, I believe it. They are new to us. I'm telling you. They are new to us. Thank you for sharing it with us. They are new to us. Ozi does not know. And brothers and sisters, we dare say this with humility in the Holy Spirit. Most of the things we share in this class, Ozi gets to know them even as we're, as the class goes on. 
Because while, while the, the Spirit of God is teaching us, Osi is listening. The Holy Ghost is only using Osi's voice. So Osi is also a student in this class. Make no mistakes about it. There are some things Osi is hearing for the first time, even as the lesson is going on. There are some the Spirit of God tells us maybe a few days before or a day before. But there are some, like, for instance, it was just less than an hour before this class began that the Spirit of God started saying, I want you to talk about Jesus. And I'm like, Lord, what do you want us to say about Jesus? We've not really studied. The Lord said, are you, have you, been, are you the teacher or I'm the teacher? I say, well, Lord, you are the teacher. All right, so we'll continue tomorrow. Amen. 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 All right, let's see here one more person. What you have learned today? Praise the Lord. Nobody has anything to say again. All right. Praise the Lord. All right, go ahead, ma. Yeah. Um, this is Sister Teresa from New York. All right, go ahead, Sister Teresa. Yeah, I learned about um, the origin of Jesus. Yes, ma. The Jesus, the child of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Um, uh, it originally started from um, John, um, first John, uh, John chapter one, from one to um, seven and fourteen. Um, Jesus, in the beginning, there was the word, and the word was um, word, word was, was with us, and the other among us and became flesh, uh, became flesh. Mm. Um, this then, uh, the beginning, Jesus, there was no Jesus, but the word. And in the book of Genesis, you have, um, um, the God, which is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And is, uh, you call it the Hel Halloween. Yes, yes, yes. And if you want to know Jesus, Jesus uh, who Jesus is, you read, um, the book of Genesis, then the, um, book of Revelation. That's when you know the truth about Jesus and the um, and in the book of um, Genesis, um, you told us about the blessings of, of that God gave a man when He made a uh, made man, and the blessings were to, uh, for man to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, and to have dominion over the earth and the earth. And they said there was no need for Jesus. But because of what men, um, Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden, that's why, um, I told me to my conclusion, that's why Jesus came, that's why there is a need for Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Sister Teresa. All right. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, any other question or contribution or something? All right, brothers and sisters, this is how much we can take tonight. We will continue tomorrow afternoon. May the Lord bless you and keep you strong. May his glory and his face smile upon you. And may the Lord uphold you for his glory. May you never see death on your part in the name of Jesus. May you sleep, may you sleep like babies and wake up as kings. May the love of God be expressed in your, in your life and in your spirit. And may Jesus be eternally declared as Lord in your life, to the glory of his name and for his name's sake, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful evening for glory and grace.